bit more. Oh dear. Oh dear, catastrophe. My days, what a flipping useless design. What's up guys, welcome back to Project Mazda episodes whatever it is today we're going to give it a service because recently i found out that it hadn't been serviced for 20,000 miles in three years so i'm actually in the middle of doing an mpg test and a dyno test videos coming soon and basically i've done an mpg run and a dyno run before i've given it a service and then after i've changed the oil oil filter and plugs uh, they're going to do another dyno run and another mpg run and find out how much difference it's made but today we're just literally just going to give it a service never done the service on one of these before i think it's pretty easy let's have a go all right so this is all the bits that i bought i think most of this came from mx5parts.co.uk might be com shout out to those guys ngk plugs because always ngk plugs mazda genuine oil filter not because for any reason, just it was just, just as cheap as all the others. And that came with a new uh, crush washer as well for the sump plug. And then some Fuchs 5W40, fully synthetic. Uh, some people said run 1040 semi-synthetic, but I think the 5W40 is just gonna do a bit of a better job and it lasts a bit longer as well. Um, right, let's investigate. Right, don't really know what I'm doing in here. Obviously that's an oil cap. These are the uh, coil packs, got to get them out and then uh, drain the oil. What I might actually do is because it hasn't had a service for a while, I'm actually going to put, you can, you're supposed to use like a synthetic oil flush thing, whatever. Actually, I'll just pour it, like, put like a pint of uh, red diesel in off the farm, let it idle for a minute, kind of really thin the oil down. And then when it drains, it should be much thinner, should get all the gunk out. That's long enough. Let's get her up in the air, get that oil out. Well, I'm mean, just gonna look for that oil filter, which is supposed to be down there somewhere, but I can't see it. Mm. Oh, yeah, right in there. Hmm. Uh, can we get to that? I reckon so. I need smaller hands, and it's gonna be hot. I'm gonna come at it from the front. Oh yeah, easy, easy. Right, we do that from the top then. We don't have to take the under tray off. Right, somewhere under here, got some plug. This is, let's go and find something that fits that and a container to put it in. Right, 17 mil that is. Oh, that's nice and loosey goosey. Right, found my container. No, I'm gonna have to put this down because it's gonna go everywhere. <laughs> Well, it was super black and super runny, but then I'd expect it to be runny because I put that diesel in to make it super thin. So I'm gonna leave that draining to get it all over my hands. It's almost smelt a bit burnt as well. But there he is. Dribble, dribble. What I should have done is taken the uh, oil cap off the top as well. But that's probably why I got a couple of like, big glugs as it was coming out, just as it the air comes out of the system. Before I forget, I'm gonna change this washer on here. That's super tight. I actually had to use get a pair of pliers on there and wind it off the threads. All right, there we go. That one. Oh, that's nice and nice and loose. Right, that's that done for in a minute. All right, I'll we'll try and get in there. Get the oil fill up. Let's see if I can get me into it. Oh, it's tight. Right, fast forward about half hour. 
I've taken the under tray off. That's over here. Tried to get to it from the top, tried to get to it from underneath. You can just about see it through here. It is up in there. Absolutely flipping useless. That's a oil filter uh, spanner that I've got to try and get to it. But I literally, like, unless you've got the most tiniest of hands, I can't get in there at all. I can, I can get to the back of it. Like there, I can literally put my fingers on it, but there's no way on earth I can undo it. My days, what a flipping useless design. My Honda one literally reach out the back of the engine, just unscrew it in my hand. <sighs> my days, what a faff. So after all of that, randomly, I found a proper oil filter spanner. I managed to get it in there. And you can see, hopefully, I'm just about at the wrong, all at a funny angle to get in there. So I've taken the under tray off for absolutely no reason whatsoever, which is really annoying, but oh, there she is. I feel it come off and it's all dribbling down there, but never mind. The more oil that goes all over this, the more it's gonna stop it going rusty. And then get a bit of oil off of that. There we go. You can pre-fill it, but I don't bother. Right, somewhere up there. Make sure the filter's in place. Find the screw threads. There we go. And then as tight as you can with your hands. Should do the job. There you go, right. So I'm plug in and let's get some oil in it. New washer on, check. Try not to drop it, check. Okay. Ain't got to be tight, hang off it, but it's got to be ah, tight enough. Right, let's get some oil in there. It's got German technology and it says super on it, so hopefully it will restore some lost horsepowers. One of the first things I do as well is pour a bit in and then check it's not pouring straight out the bottom, which it isn't. Well, I just Googled it and it says it takes 3.8 litres. So I've poured in three because obviously when you drain it, you don't get every little last bit out. What are we looking at? Just on the bottom. Dipstick, so you've got a bit more to go. What are we looking like? About halfway. Oh, bang on. All right, let's run it up for a minute. Let's see where it settles. Obviously, there's a bit that's got to go in the oil filter, but also sometimes you get a bit trapped in certain areas of the engine, so. Put all that back together, far up. I'm not getting a wheel light flash for a second or two. No. All the pressure's come straight up. Lovely. All right, leave that run for a minute. What we're looking like, it's down to half now. It's a bit more, oh dear. Oh dear, catastrophe. That may be a bit old and brittle. <laughs> glug, glug, glug. Mm, bang on. Right, let's do these plugs. Right, let's get in here. It looks like we've got some 10 mils. Get these coil packs off. Unplug these leads first. I guess it needs just to give that a wiggle. Let's get a pair of pliers. Oh, there we go. Try and remember how these go. That goes to there, that goes to there. Ah, oh, there you go. That goes to there. Let's pop that over to that side. That's over to there. I don't disrupt that too much, then it should. We'll go back in the same place. Turn me on here. Rock it. Easy, easy. 
There we go. goes to there oh, okay so the middle it's a bit weird so the middle of two cylinders is done by one oh, I'm gonna out strut brace in the way come on brilliant uh, okay had a bit of a special moment literally that pops off of there and then that can come off of there that can go to one side I'll leave that point in towards Cylinder number two, and I know where that came out of. That's a coil pack that goes to that's number three, that's number four, that's on a really long wire, and then that is number one. And we'll just put that to one side so we know where they all go. We'll quit looking here. Yeah, plugs, 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 plugs. Right, let's get them out. I've got a proper plug spanner. So, this. It, the idea is it's got a little rubber thing in there which is a bit mangled but basically the idea is obviously when it's down in there it grips your spark plug and then you can pull it out which is a bit squeaky which means it's a bit dry bit, haven't been out for a while and dear it's a bit wet a bit yellow on the end mm, right let's get the others out see what they look like Okay, they're all out. I don't know if you can see it. That was this is in the order that I've taken them out. So cylinder number one and cylinder number four look a bit wet. So I don't know if that's because the spark plugs are breaking down and it's um, not burning the fuel or what. I don't know. Ones in the middle look dry, but they all look a bit cooked. So let's put some fresh ones in and see how she runs. There you go, fresh plug is in. Now what I actually do is I'll get a bit of old oil, just a little dab on my finger, and just wipe it on the threads just to help it go in, because these plugs haven't been in, been out for a while, and they're a bit squeaky. And what I also do is I don't put the ratchet on, so that you can put it in, or oh, I can feel the, I can feel it, I'm trying to grab, it's all tight, and then you feel the oil, once they do one revolution, and the oil's, coated it all and you can basically just do it up as tight as you can with your hands if you've obviously put a ratchet straight on there you can end up miss and it's misthreaded you end up causing a whole load of damage there you go that's as tight as I can now all right next one there you go right they're all hand tight and then just give them a little I tend to do them up but instead of putting me on there I just put them there because I think that's tight enough there you go you feel it go tight and then God, it gives it another quarter of a turn after that oh lost my socket there you go there she is Last but not least, it's not, as my dad say, it's not tight pinch tight, it's not uh, tight busting tight, it's tight tight enough. Right, now to remember how all this goes back. So that is number one core pack, that lines up with those threads. Number two is over here, and that pops in there. Number three is there, and that goes in there, where's number four? Can't see it. Oh, over here. There she is. Drop down there. And that goes in. There, like so. There you go. You can feel it pop onto the. There we go. And that's got to go in there. Can I do it one handed? Yes. That's in there. There, click, that goes in, there, click, and then I've got some 10 mils in my pocket to screw that down. So we'll put them in, 
quick squirt of GT85. Do the do the latch on the car as well while we're it. Next one. Whoa, is it weird? I love the smell GT85. I wouldn't put it on as an aftershave, don't get me wrong, but it smells better than WD40 in my opinion. Bit of a weird thing to admit to, I'll be honest. But there we go. As always, do it up without the ratchet and then give it a pinch with the old Rachito. Okay. These are more like pinch tight. Right. Don't know the toolbox. Get rid of. Put a bunch of bits down there. Let's double check. That's all plugged in. Click, 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 click. Haven't undone any of them. Right, moment of truth. Let's see if it fires up. Boom. Sounds exactly the same. No horsepower is lost. Well, it sounds exactly the same. Let's see if that's gained me my missing horsepowers. <laughs> I doubt it. There you go. The only thing I haven't changed is that uh, air filter. Couldn't think of what I was saying there. There you go. So I've just got one of those like drop in uh, panel filters. It's literally like a bit of a K&N copy, like gauze sort of job. There you go, stopped a load of stuff coming in already. Excellent. And obviously you've got the JR uh, air filter sticker on there as well. So hopefully that's given me an extra five horsepower, but I don't think it has. There you go, new oil, new oil filter, new plugs. Hopefully that's uh, regained me some missing horsepowers. It's pouring with rain, so I'm not gonna have the roof down on the way home. But I will see you on the next one. Honestly, who put the oil filter down the back of there? Isn't it rock? What do you think? <coughs> it's wet and cold in here. Come on, let's go home.